Greetings and welcome to the conclusions section of our lab report rubric screencast series on basically how to write good lab reports for Mr. Johnson's biology class. So, as noted, this will cover our conclusion section and uh, let's go to the rubric that we've been looking at. If you've not already watched the other sections, I encourage you to do so before doing this one. But uh, this section of the lab report is worth 15 points. And the very first thing you should do is state whether your hypothesis was validated or refuted. Do not tell me that the hypothesis was proven. It's okay to say it was disproven, though that may be more about funky data that seemingly disproves the hypothesis. It depends on the lab. But, uh, but definitely do not say that your hypothesis was proven. If we go to our sample here, you'll note the very first thing, hypothesis um, supported by the data. Um, from there, we will really jump into the idea of description, inference, and extrapolation. Description basically is a rehash of what happened in the lab. That as we increase the concentration, time required went down. But then we go beyond that to inference. So in the results section, we really talked about avoiding inference. In our conclusion section, we want to develop inference. So here, as more enzyme is added, the rate of collisions between enzyme and substrate increases accordingly. Um, obviously, with each individual experiment, what our inferences are will be different. But basically, what we're saying here is not just what we think, what happened, but why we think it happened. So that is really your inference section of the lab report. Our um, and we already talked about description. Our extrapolation section is going to go from the data to um, what would happen beyond the data we collected. So, for example, in our graph, we went out to 100% down to 25%. We could talk about if more potent concentrations of enzyme were made, um, what might happen. And so, here we have a statement. Doubling the number of enzymes doubles the likelihood that it will collide. This is still more inference, but if we go then to uh, look at below, um, if a new higher concentration were prepared, it would basically do what? And this is kind of like thinking about if we continue the graph off the page, what would happen on that graph? Would it go up? Would it go down? Would it level off? Etc. cetera. Um, that's really an example of extrapolation. It's going beyond the set of data collected to think about what would the data do if we went even further with it. Okay, another thing that you really want to do in your conclusion section is talk about things that um, happen in the lab, maybe not according to, to the plan. So if we look at our data up here, you'll note that the points are not perfectly on the line. If this was a linear relationship, the points should be ideally directly on this line in a perfect relationship. We didn't see that, though the relationship in this experiment should be a linear one. That tells us that probably our data had some experimental error in it. And so in a result, I'm sorry, in a conclusion section, you want to talk about what those sources of error were. So for example, in this particular lab report, uh, I noted the variation between the paper disks or the preparation of the enzyme solution. You know, you will have specific sources of experimental error, but this is a place where you really should be brainstorming going back to that lab in thinking about what are some things we did that maybe we didn't do perfectly and then thinking about how could we do those things better. And so you want to sort of, at the end of your lab report, talk about how you could produce better data. Um, yeah, there's some obvious ones like, for example, doing multiple repetitions because oftentimes experiments don't have enough repetition, but there are probably additional things that will be specific to your lab report. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, I guess there's one other thing, and that would be to tie your conclusion back to the introduction. So you'll note if you go back and, and listen to the uh, screencast of the introduction, kind of the overview of the experiment, here we are coming back to what we thought would happen in the experiment, and now in light of our data, what actually happened. Did it go back to what we thought would happen? And so a good um, conclusion section brings the lab full circle. Think about the scientific method that you have observations that lead you to an educated guess, which you formalize the hypothesis. 
you conduct a procedure or an experiment to test that hypothesis, you collect data and information from it, and then you analyze that data and revisit your hypothesis, which means revisiting the basic idea of the lab and decide whether or not this really has some merit or not. So if you can do that in your conclusion section, um, you will be well on your way to uh, a solid 15 out of 15 on the conclusion. Next up, we'll talk about formatting and citation, and that will be in a separate podcast or screencast, so uh, watch for that.